Hello, this is Bakayaro, and welcome to Airship Pirates World. So, about a month ago, uh, we had a war on the server. It was fought between, let's see, it started between the SHSF and the Silver Empire, which at the time was the largest faction on the server, and uh, they, like, re required people to pay taxes to go to certain cities, and they were quite powerful. So there are all these provocations and political squabblings, and uh, at one point they they fired on one of uh, the SHSF vessels, and so, and it eventually led to war, and it started with a surprise attack against a Silver Empire carrier full of cargo. Now it's important to note these were all decisions made by the leadership. And the pilot of the carrier really had nothing to do with any of this and was largely innocent in all of this. But ultimately, as is the case in the real world, it is not the leadership that often pays the price for their mistakes. It is unfortunate, but that's kind of the way it is. So I just wanted to get that out of the way that I don't consider uh, the, the, the pilots of the ships that, uh, that we attacked to really be guilty per se, they just were on the wrong side. Okay, so first off, so we were basically just waiting for the opportunity to ambush this ship. We knew the route that they traveled, and we knew that they were on the most expensive leg of their journey where they would have the most value in cargo. So intel is key. We set up our fighters, and we waited for them to come into range. There were peaceful vessels nearby, like this guy. This is Firecore, one of the other players. We hid from them, too, because we didn't want to reveal our position even to people who were not our enemies. So we waited quite some time. Uh, this is a particularly high traffic area of the server, um, and other players uh, came nearby as well. Uh, pretty soon you see there's this uh, Royal Navy vessel that uh, went nearby. So this is a, a very popular spot to transport quartz, which is the most expensive cargo in the game, and also the reason that we chose it for our ambush spot. This was back before there were light ships, uh, so really all traffic had to go, if you were going to be transporting quartz, which was where the real money was, you had to go through this section. Uh, there was no overland route that you could take. Nowadays, light ships can fly over the uh, mountains and, and land to, to take a more direct route. Yeah, I think they actually saw us, uh, because he says something about a new contact, uh, but we didn't say anything, because again, we didn't want to give away our position and start a conversation that might lead to the target being spooked and not coming. So you can see at this point I'm kind of thinking, ah, do I say anything? Do I not say anything? And ultimately I decided to simply say nothing. And fortunately for our little ambush, uh, the Royal Navy captain eventually just moved on. Okay, and here we go. So after spending hours and hours and hours waiting and, and chatting with Captain Eckener, uh, we had determined that once the target came within 500 meters, we would begin our attack run. So as soon as that point was reached, we left our hiding places and began our attack runs. The plan of attack was, I was going to take the south side, Eckner was going to take the north, we were going to run along the long axis of the carrier, dropping bombs along the way. I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that I was very worried that this attack would fail. That this had never been done before on the actual live server. In fact, people had attempted to attack warships with fighters before, and it had always failed. Looking back, uh, this attack was very one-sided, but it didn't feel that way at the time, because I knew if this attack was launched, but failed, we would be in serious trouble. Because the Silver Empire was incredibly wealthy, and could afford a prolonged attack that we maybe could not. And there's a lot that can go wrong in an attack. However, as you can see, this time, fortune was on our side. All right, the target is now within visual range. We'd been watching it on our contacts for a while, but now we could see it. So I make my final adjustments to make sure that my bombing run is going to be right on that south side, the south runway on that carrier. And the poor unfortunate pilot of that carrier, whose name is Speedius, has no idea that there's anything wrong until the bombs start falling from the sky. Uh, 
After opening up on the flight deck, I move on to the control tower to eliminate the control of the ship. Once that control tower is destroyed, it will be next to impossible for that ship to escape. Next, I move on to the aft midsection of the ship. I know this design. I know that most of its lift comes from this part. Destroy that and the ship cannot fly. Because the ship has not yet begun sinking, I move to the other side and destroy the remaining lifting cells over there. It's at this point that I begin to realize that the ship has been released and is not going to sink. Now, technically, that's against the rules. But I figured Speedius had had a bad enough day as it was, and I wasn't going to press the issue. So, with the target effectively destroyed, and knowing that Ekener would cover me if anything should happen, I retrieved a pre-written statement giving my reasons for declaring the war, and to put it into the chat. It's sort of this long role-playing speech about the various grievances of what had happened, and uh, there's more information on the forums. I'll go ahead and link that to this video if anyone's interested. With that done, Ekner and myself begin to talk about what we're going to do next. Uh, that's a good point. So this whole time, me and Ekner have been together on, uh, I think it was TeamSpeak that we were using, uh, communicating and coordinating. Uh, and that is vital. If you want to have a successful attack, you need that coordination. You have to be able to work as a team. Uh, so we decide that we're going to get in there and strafe the, the carrier. The idea being to make sure that none of the fighters are recoverable. So, we open up the dispensers, take out the remaining TNT, uh, and replace it with fireballs, normally used for anti-aircraft work. Now, as I get into position uh, and, and start this strafing work, one thing you may notice is that I go in and out of direct control mode. I'll use direct control mode, uh, especially while strafing, it just it depends on what exactly I'm trying to do. So I may have it on at times, I may have it off at times. Yeah, and I, I think that a lot of that goes down to your individual fighting style. Um, but this is what works for me. I like to be able to keep my eyes on the target as I maneuver and fire. Alright, at this point, we're basically just going through the ship, making sure as many of the fighters as possible is destroyed, making sure that the cargo is entirely destroyed, um, although I understand a few chests actually made it and uh, were later salvaged by the Silver Empire. But anyway, I'll go ahead and speed this up, um, because it's, like I say, at this point we're basically just uh, picking the bones clean, so to speak.
All right, and finally, after deciding that the target was as destroyed as we were going to make it, we head for home. And at this point, my mind is already racing to the next attack, trying to think what's going to happen next. Are we going to get demolished when the Silver Empire makes their counterattack? Are my tactics actually any good? Will it work? What's going to happen? All of that stuff. But at this point, this one attack I knew had gone very well. The Silver Empire had lost a lot of wealth in that one ship. As far as we know, it was carrying at least seven million dollars in quartz. Well, that's about all I have. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's meant to give kind of a demonstration of gameplay on the server, carrying out an attack, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe. And I will see you next time.